<laughs> Quiz time. Think about everything you know about endometriosis. You might fall on the spectrum of having no idea what that word means to being very painfully aware of what endometriosis is. Or worse, you think you know what endometriosis is. That was my case. I had friends that had endometriosis in college and in high school, and I was one of those folks who thought it was just bad cramps. And it was only until very recently that I was disabused of this idea by the artist Amanda Atkins and videographer June Lancer's documentary, Endometriosis Artists Who Advocate. As soon as I saw one of my favorite Phoenix artists, Amanda Atkins, had a new exhibit and show about this topic, I reached out to her and asked her to do an interview about the show. I then found out that there was a film associated with the show and I knew that I wanted to do a Courageous Creatives interview with both Amanda and the filmmaker June. Friends now for almost two decades, Amanda and June worked with several other artists who are advocating for endometriosis. I talked to them about the making of this documentary, the exhibit itself, the symbolism in Amanda's work, and they have some extraordinary things to say about fear and creativity. Stick around. My name is Sky Lucking. I'm an artist and muralist here in Phoenix, Arizona, and this is Courageous Creatives, the YouTube channel that elevates you to your highest self using inspiration, education, courage building, and community. On this channel, I am interviewing some of the most intriguing, creative, genius people in the state, and I'm giving tips and tricks if you are a creative person looking to make your way in the world, and I'm giving some motivational advice and fashion tips randomly on Fridays. If that sounds like that's up your alley, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you never miss a video. This interview is long, but so, so good. You can check out the table of contents down in the description if you wanna skip around, but I encourage you to both watch this entire video because it's all so good. But before you do that, or after you do that, you should absolutely see the documentary about what this video is about. Endometriosis, Artists Who Advocate is the film by June Lancer, a videographer, and artist Amanda Atkins, and it is amazing and touching and horrifying and terrific. You can see that right here. Click right here, pause me, or watch it after. Click up here and go and watch this film. It will definitely leave you more educated than you were, even if you feel like you're educated about endometriosis now. Be an ally, be an advocate, because this disease is horrible, it does terrible things, and worst of all, it is very misunderstood. Okay, without further ado, let's get to the interview. How do we meet? With just from years of being in the same circle of friends in the early 2000s? Yeah. And then we just reconnected. We started a women's circle and we reconnected. Really? Yeah. Oh, Through nice. a mutual friend. The beginning of my series of work that I'm calling Grow Speak began when I made the decision to have a hysterectomy. Uh, I, I was pretty upset by the, the choice that I was faced with and not necessarily a choice that I wanted to make but I had to make because my health was declining. And so to kind of get through that as a way to heal, I was like, I'm going to paint about this. And it kind of started with one painting. And then I, it felt like after that, I was like, this is, this is what I need to do. And I just continued painting more work. And before I knew it, I had like five pieces and then 10 pieces. And then I was like, I guess this is a series of work. <laughs> so I, then after that, the ideas just kept flowing out of me. 
And so I just continued, continued forward with it. The symbolisms in my work are representational of my current health issue, uh, the disease endometriosis. I use different things in my work to represent surgeries, doctors, nurses. To me, I wanted it to be beautiful um, and healing, not like something that's like bloody and grotesque, like much like the reality of what the disease is. But hummingbirds uh, become doctors and butterflies become nurses. I have the crow as a representation of myself. Um, sometimes the crow is the storyteller and then sometimes the crow is the disease. My background uh, with filmmaking and photography started in my 20s. I actually worked first for a portrait studio, which gets you zero street cred, but I loved children so much. So I, it was the job that I could do to take pictures of children and I loved it for years. And then I left and people started asking me to take photos for them. And can you take photos? So it's kind of, it grew on its own. So I'm like, well, sure, I'll get a camera and I'll do that. And then I'm like, well, I guess I need a website and I guess I need to update my camera. And so it's just, it's something that's followed me for years. And then I recently quit my corporate job, which we can all celebrate, and decided that um, photography is something I'd done for years, but I wanted something more and took a film course and got so excited and inspired that now I want to film everything, all of the things. <laughs> so. How did this come to be? She was starting, as I understand it, she was putting together her art show and really it was important to her to have an educational piece. And then we were sitting in a women's circle together talking and I was announcing my excitement about filmmaking. The look on her face, like we had a lightning belt moment oh. where I think she's like, let's work together. Um, yeah, so when June and I were in our women's circle together and she mentioned like how excited she was to start filming and doing different things with film, I initially, my idea was to have these women come and speak at my art opening or closing. When she said she was doing film, I was like, oh, so I could actually get this on film or even like interview um, these ladies. And then that could be a way just to like have it as a permanent focused educational piece to where other people can view it, whether it be like on social media, or I can, you know, use it as a way to send it out to other, like, film, uh, a film series or something like that. The important piece was to find other people that were advocating. I remember that was a very important part. Yeah. Yeah, so I initially, um, one of the women I found was from a suggestion from another friend. Her name's Michelle Dawn. You guys should connect. And so I reached out to her and we just started talking back and forth. So it happened that she was flying up to Atlanta to get surgery a week before my surgery. Carissa Lucille saw my posts online and she reached out to me and we kind of did a back and forth as well because her surgery was a week after mine. And so all three of us stayed in touch during our surgeries. And then um, I realized that they all were also doing things to advocate for endometriosis. Michelle Dawn made this amazing book called Endometriosis, The Story for Everyone. And it's an illustrated book she put together. And then Carissa Lucille had made a zine about her experience with actual photography pieces that she put together. And then Erin Davis, she was also making art to reflect endometriosis. And so I thought, hey, all these women are doing something to advocate, and I would prefer to feature women who were doing something to advocate. And I just contacted them and asked them if they would be interested in making a film. So what I was exci most excited about me making in this film was just that, you know, 
it was one of those aha moments where it hadn't occurred to me what I would do with the filmmaking knowledge I was obtaining. I just knew that, you know, life is motion and I had previously done everything in, in photography, which is still, and I, and I love that, but it just didn't speak to me in the same way. And so as soon as we started talking about doing it and then what a documentary would look like, it just had that magic where it unfolded in my mind. And now it's her vision and, and the process of talking about it and working through it and how important it is just super inspired me. And I didn't know, I don't think we've even talked about this. Mm -hmm. Now, like all I want to do is help other women do what we did, like spread, spread awareness of women's, all things to do with women women helping other women, women advocating for other women, things that need awareness. I had no intention, but when Amanda had the idea, it opened up this whole side of me that I didn't know was there. And so now I'm really excited. I'm passionate about documentaries. I had no intention of making documentaries, so. Yay. Oh, congratulations. No, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> One of the paintings I did is actually of my daughter, and the crow is kind of talking to my daughter, telling her, like, you're the only seed. And then I actually brought in my sister, who also can very much relate to chronic illness. Um, she has type 1 diabetes and Hashimoto's. So to say that, you know, she can relate to what I'm going through is an understatement. But she has been a dancer for gosh, since she was a little girl, and she's been professionally dancing for the last 15 years, and I was like, hey, do you want to do something? I think it would be awesome to have this, like, physical piece, an emotional, like, physical piece that can be presented, and she came up with something that was, like, really beautiful, and I, I cried a little bit, but... <laughs> Um, the string that she uses while she's dancing um, was kind of meant to represent being restricted by illness and then like being set free and then being restricted again and that it's like a constant thing that's there and that goes away sometimes and it, it comes back. So I liked that there was like a prop involved and, um, and that she kind of pulled that too from some of my work because some of my past works also have like strings attaching to things and, and then literally I had a string attached to me during surgery. It wasn't a string but more like tubes attached to me so. Um, fear and creativity um, they do go hand in hand and with this series of work I was creating about my health condition, I realized that I was going to be exposing myself and like all these things that happened to me that were very private things. Uh, installation I did with tampons and, um, you know, I did pomegranate juice soaking up uh, the tampon chain and I, there was a moment while I was hanging this where I'm like, oh, people are going to think this is so gross and blah, 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 it's a tampon. And then I was like, you know what, like, the people need to go beyond this and like I, why am I afraid like this is what's happening to me and I wanted people to know what was happening to me and so like in order to move on and to get past the idea that everyone's going to know what happened to me and um, like all the things that I might personally find embarrassing and because endometriosis can be quite embarrassing because the different body parts that it affects and everything. I had to realize that one, being a woman is not embarrassing and to love all my parts and to two, two that I, what I was doing was important for women. And I realized that have, when, when having a group of other women that, that I was talking to about this, that I was going to be empowering other people. And so I feel like knowing that I was helping somebody else also gave me the momentum to be brave and to push past my fear of showing this work that was so personal to me. I was very surprised. I got quite a few emotional reactions from women 
um, several women cried just by viewing the work, um, not even the video. <laughs> so I was like, oh, if, if they're crying now, like it, it's definitely, the video is definitely going to make a big impact. Um, and I did not expect that response at all. Uh, and actually quite a few men were extremely supportive and um, that was also surprising to me as well. I had a beautiful reaction to the work. <laughs> like that fear, that fear is always going to be a part of the conversation. And so you just have to choose to not let fear make decisions. And so, so I, I quit anyway, and that I thought was going to be the hardest part. And it turns out, you know, women have to put yourself out there. And you have to choose what you really like to do. And you can't let money and all those decisions, because I realize it all comes back to fear. Everything that stops me or gives me pause all comes back to fear. And so I just decided that um, fear isn't an option. So fear and creativity <laughs> and what it can do to you as an artist. Um, fear can stifle you and definitely uh, make you afraid to go forward. So sometimes I have to have these little talks in my head with little artists that I put in there. <laughs> Famous artists that I put in there that help me get beyond the things I'm afraid of. If you're constantly afraid, then it, it will hinder you from ever moving forward. So it is, it is hard, it is a hard something to move past. But I, I kind of always just like, I grip my teeth and like move forward. <laughs> or like, what's the saying where you just like grin and, and bear what might come to you um, not to be afraid of rejection. I get rejections all the time. Like I just got two emails the other day where like I applied for something and my work wasn't picked and you just kind of got to put yourself out there and hope for the best and maybe it will connect with somebody because you never know who that information might reach or they might say, catalog your um, work and save it for later and then go back and be like, oh, this fits with this art show or theme perfectly. And then um, all those times you were like kind of talking to yourself and bringing yourself down about it, you regret because then you're like, oh, they did like my work. It just didn't fit for what they wanted at that time. We've talked about like, like reaching out to other women artists who are doing things with art to represent like an emotional state or health issues. Um, so I'm looking forward to finding some more ladies to work with with Dune. I, I would say, and lastly, with my artwork, I'm going to continue forward with what I'm doing. And endometriosis is not done with me, and I know that. So I feel like moving forward with this, I definitely want to create some brighter, I feel like more healing work. Even I've had ideas because like water is very healing to me incorporating some of those aspects also into what's coming next. In an ideal world, I would like endometriosis to be handled much differently than it is handled now. Right now it takes seven to ten years for women to be diagnosed with endometriosis because it has all these little tricky symptoms and makes doctors think it could be this or could be that. And then also a lot of doctors are uneducated about the disease. And so it's kind of like women go in, they complain about this symptom or that symptom, and it gets brushed off to this or brushed off to that, when in actuality it's a very serious disease that's happening to them. So in an ideal world, I would like there to be some type of blood test that identifies endometriosis instead of women having to go under the knife because that's the only way right now endometriosis is detected is through laparoscopic surgery. The other thing that I would also like to see happen is girl, young girls being educated in high school about what this disease is. I know the Endometriosis Foundation is trying to do that right now. Um, they're raising funds to try to get education into schools for young girls. So 
if they start having symptoms that there's some that it can be detected much earlier instead of this 10 year time span and then boom your organs are already damaged so education surrounding endometriosis and then marketing surrounding endometriosis that paints a clear picture of what the disease is not bad cramps not fertility issues just a disease that attacks your major organs and then of course and i in an ideal world more funding towards the disease and more focus on it because right now of course women's health issues and women's rights are being ignored and that's very unfortunate and yes there is no cure for endometriosis about and so my hope in continuing to help with these sorts of things is that more people which i heard echoed over and over again that more people don't feel alone and more people have resources and access to information and but the biggest part is that they're not the only ones that that there are other people that they can turn to this the being alone piece just about any any issue is one of the hardest bits so that is so well said thank you june and amanda yes people are not alone and collaborations like this and women like this are spreading the message that you can get help or you can commiserate with others Please go, if you haven't already, check out the video, the documentary on Amanda Atkins' YouTube channel while you're there. Subscribe to Amanda's channel. Also, the zines mentioned by Carissa Lucille and Michelle Dawn, they are linked below. Go get those zines. They are fantastic. And check out June's website, Amanda's website. These are all women who are doing incredible things. As always, it would be incredible if you subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification so you never miss a video. Also, sh please share uh, with your friends and like this. Share the documentary with friends. I think that you probably know someone who suffers from endometriosis or know someone who knows someone. And so this is a wonderful documentary to share. And if you are advocating for a cause or a health issue or something else that affects you or other people, remember, you, you are, are courageous. courageous.